What's up, YouTube? I'm Dan, and I know, switching can be tough. No, not Nintendo switching. Monitor switching. I have a bunch of monitors, which is great for productivity, but for video games, it can be kind of tough. Games boot up on the wrong screen, and especially if you're wicked cool like me and have a TV behind you where you play your games, it can be a huge pain in the butt. So I've got two videos coming up to make this easy. The first one, which is this video, is how to use buttons to switch monitors, like this. And then the other one, I'll show you how to use your voice. Alexa, start gaming. I'm gonna go through every step in detail so even the most novice computer peoples will be able to get through it. For what it's worth, using buttons to switch is a lot easier than using your voice, but the voice isn't really that hard. It's just like requires a lot of steps, downloading software and signing up for services. So now let's go with the easy one. Buttons. First things first, let's buy the cool buttons. If you wanna follow this guide exactly, buy the Eckhart USB Mini 3 key keypad. It has three programmable buttons and connects to the computer via USB. If you wanna be all rebellious and get your own damn button, just make sure there are at least two keys. The more keys, the more monitor configurations you can switch between. For me, I wanna switch between two configurations, my desk monitors and my big TV. Definitely don't only get one button though, even though I would love to have like a big red button that does it. Okay, click buy it now and there it is. I love Amazon. So now that we've ordered the buttons, what you have to do is download a tiny free program whose author wasn't very creative with the name, Monitor Profile Switcher. Uh, with this program, we can create different monitor profiles and switch between them. So um, I'm gonna download it from SourceForge. I just searched Google for Monitor Profile Switcher. It was actually challenging to get this to download. I don't know if it was just a bad time to do it, but Let's hope it downloads, let's see. I don't know why it, wa it wasn't working earlier, but let's just see, here we go. Here we go. There we go, that's nice, great, okay. So I'm just gonna save it to my downloads. All right, so I have it saved to my downloads folder, so I'm just gonna unzip it. I'm gonna right click and say extract all, and I'm going to choose a new folder to save it to. I'm gonna go to C, I'm gonna make a new folder called monitor switching. And then inside that, I'm gonna make a new folder called Monitor profile switcher. And I'm gonna unzip, double click on that and unzip into that folder. Great. So now I'm just gonna go up here to see monitor switching. Monitor profile switcher, great. So now it's installed. I wouldn't install it to your program files directory because that is read only. So it probably would have some trouble saving configurations. One of the issues with monitor profile switcher is it doesn't include an option to start up with Windows, which we really want to do because you don't want to push the button and you don't want nothing to happen. So let's put on our big boy pants and get technical. Okay, so inside this folder, we want monitor switcher GUI, which is graphical user interface. We're gonna right click on it Click show more options and then create shortcut. Now type Windows key R to open the run dialog, which looks like this, and type shell colon startup. So this opens your startup folder and anything inside this folder will be started with the computer. So drag the shortcut into the startup folder and now you're done. Now take off your big boy pants and let's continue. I meant figuratively. Next step, double click monitor switcher GUI.exe and you'll see it open up in the taskbar. So the way you save profiles is setting your monitors to the configuration you wanna save, then opening up monitor profile switcher, going up to save profile, clicking new profile, and typing in the name for your profile. So if we open up display preferences, so I just clicked on settings, which is also, you can right click here and get settings. Uh, system is over here, click display. And you'll see these are all my monitors. So let's click identify. Um, so this is the monitor we're on now. This is my right hand monitor and this is my TV. Um, and the way that I put this together was I used this multiple displays dialog here. So essentially this monitor I set as my main monitor. So I have it checked off, make this my main display. Um, and then monitor one, make this my main display is unchecked, but I also clicked extend desktop to this display. And then my TV is plugged in, but I set that to disconnect this display. 
I would show you, but it's gonna mess up the whole recording. So, um, but that's what you gotta do. You just gotta set your monitors the way you want. So right now, these are my desk monitors. That's my TV. And what I want is, is for my two desk monitors to be on and active. And I want my TV to be disconnected, okay? So monitor profile switcher uh, will save this profile here. This little arrow, it's hiding. Um, so I'm just gonna click monitor profile switcher, click save profile and then new profile. And I'm gonna type in desk monitors, okay. So now I have a profile called desk monitors, yay. Um, so I also have to make a profile for the TV, but I can't record and do that at the same time. The whole system will die. I'll get back to you once I have my TV set up. One sec. Okay, so I have made it so that the TV is my only monitor that's on. So what's going on here is my desk monitors are both off because I have them both set to disconnect and I have my TV set to extend desktop to this display. Um, a quick note, you wanna make sure that if, if you're extending it to a, something like a TV, you wanna make sure to make that your main display before you disconnect these guys because they're not gonna wanna disconnect if they're the main display, it's gonna be grayed out. So here we are on our setup and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go down to monitor profile switcher, save profile, new profile, and I'm just gonna call it TV, TV only. Welcome back. Here we are back at our desk display and you can see that I've added TV only as one of my profiles. And just clicking on these two makes it so much easier than changing all these settings. So if this was already enough work for you, switching monitor profiles using monitor profile switcher just down in the system tray is probably enough. So go have a drink, you're done. Not you, you're not done. The next step to making the buttons we bought work with monitor profile switcher is setting a key combination to switch between monitor profiles. So if you're like me and do any sort of creative work on your computer, you wanna make sure you're not using a key press that one of your creative apps uses. For me, I use Photoshop, After Effects, and Premiere and found that Control Shift M and Control Shift G are both available. To associate these hotkeys with your monitor profiles, click on the monitor profile switcher system tray icon Go to set hotkeys and then select which one you want to set the hotkeys for. So I'm going to click desk monitors. Now anything you press goes, so don't press anything by accident. Um, I'm going to do control shift G. So control shift G. There we go. And then okay. Then I'm going to go to TV only and do control shift M and click okay. Perfect. And also just make sure to write down which key combo you used for which profile because you'll definitely need to know that later. Great, now you can use key combinations to change monitors however you want. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for buttons. Buttons. So bookmark this video if you're still waiting for the buttons to come in. But mine, they're here. The buttons I bought came with instructions that said, the software is non-toxic. Please rest assured to download. Sounds great. So the instructions that came with the buttons uh, direct me to this website. And if you got the same buttons as me, then you'll see the same exact thing. Uh, dl.sayobot.cn slash setting.zip. So I'm just gonna put that in my address bar here. There we go. And I'm gonna save it to my downloads folder. And I'm going to unzip it. Right click. They extract all. And I'm gonna make a new folder called Ext Keys here in monitor switching. Extract. Great. So now we have all our files here. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up this executable and it's going to tell me that it doesn't want me to do it, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna allow access. Okay, I'm gonna click English. <laughs> and I'm going to say connect. Okay, button. Okay. <laughs> so we open up this thing and um, it looks like I already filled these out. So I'll just do the mode three, just so you can see what happens here. So you just click where it says modifier keys. And then it gives you all the different buttons. So you do left control, left shift, and then okay. And then here you just click whatever button it is. So it would be like 
J, I don't know. But I'm not setting a third button, I'm just showing you. So, you know, turning it off. Okay. Um, yeah, so you just do that for both. For the first one is the uh, is desk monitors, control shift G. And then the second one is control shift M for my TV. Good, so then you click permanent save. And there we go. Also, there's like lighting on these buttons. It's like very, like, I don't know why. It worked. I pressed the second button and it went to my TV. Press the first button, it went back to my two desk monitors. It's a really fun feeling, honestly, to like push those buttons and for it to just switch automatically. Um, to make sure that it works, uh, make sure you didn't skip that step when I had it start with Windows. Otherwise, you're gonna be pushing buttons and nothing's gonna happen. And you can go crazy with combinations. Like I probably would put in the third one left monitor only because a lot of times when I'm gaming, I'm doing it on my left monitor because that's the one with 120 hertz mode. Um, and I might want the other monitor to turn off. Oftentimes if I'm starting a game, it like messes up everything while I'm starting it. But if there's only one monitor, it messes it up less. And like the creator of this program, I wish had a button press for turn all monitors off because sometimes I'm watching shows like Game of Thrones, like, I can't see the TV because my monitors are reflected in the TV. So that's a thing, but they don't have that yet. And another thing to think about, if you're connecting to your TV TV, um, the HDMI CEC thing where like HDMI devices turn the TV on and off, it doesn't really work on Windows as far as I could tell so far, or it looked like it was gonna require like too many programs or extra steps. So just make sure that if it's not popping up on the TV, make sure you turn the TV on and you have to change the input setting to the right setting on the TV. So, hey, that's it. Now you have these buttons on your computer desk that you can use to easily switch between monitor configurations. Next thing is gonna be using your voice to do this, which is really fun, I love it. I set the words start gaming to do it because it makes me feel like a cool nerd. And um, it really makes it easier. Another advantage of using your voice is that uh, Alexa lets you do other stuff with your TV. So I can make it turn on the TV first before the monitors switch. I can make a change to the correct HDMI input and it just gives you a lot more flexibility. I mean, it's cool to switch buttons here, but it's even cooler to switch with your voice. So please subscribe if you wanna see that video and leave a like if this worked for you. If you bought the buttons, let me know. Um, if you got different buttons that you like more, if you got seven buttons and you have seven different monitor configurations, more power to you. Um, if you have any questions or you wanna help doing any other stuff, please leave it in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Not you.